finally 2022 and let's start with my new Senate map. And there we go for the safe state. So let's start for Colorado. So Colorado, uh, we go right here. Colorado is one of those states that it's pretty much going to be uh, a Democratic win with Michael Bennett as the incumbent senator. And uh, there's talk about maybe Eli Brummer um, running as a Republican nominee, but he would, of course, lose by, uh, probably the Democrats would win by a likely margin. Only way I see Colorado dropping to lean Democrat is if Cory Gardner, the former senator who lost uh, not long ago, runs in 2022, which I doubt. Uh, who knows what would happen, but as of now, I see Colorado being a likely state. Briefly for Utah and uh, Maryland, I just don't see a way in which Utah drops so likely in a red wave year, even if Democrats uh, help McMullen, uh, I just don't see that happening. Well, for Maryland, it's a really deep blue state. Even if Larry Hogan runs, I just don't see the state dropping below 15. Uh, and my margin is 12 plus or safe, so for the next one, for Alaska. For Alaska, uh, if we go to Alaska, everybody knows that Trump really wants to primary Murkowski since she's more of a, not a liberal Republican, but she's more moderate. Uh, there's been some talk about people like Sarah Palin running. Uh, she has hinted uh, that she wants to run, but it's mostly uh, Kelly Shabaka, uh, who will probably get, I think she already has the Trump endorsement, if I'm not mistaken. And let me look for it. Uh, uh, it doesn't say here, but moving on. So uh, I think, you know, even whatever happens, uh, the only reason it's not safe is because of the fact there's going to be a primary in uh, some inner party battle between the Trump wing and the uh, Neil Kong wing of the Republican Party. Even then, I see Murkowski winning here by anywhere from likely or lean. And yeah, so for the next state, uh, let's talk about uh, Ohio, one of my favorite ones. So, and yeah, here we go. So, Ohio, it's really gonna be a GOP win, of course, but it's really what's interesting is who is going to be the GOP uh, nominee. So, the main ones are JD Vance, Timken, and Mandel. And uh, Manziel is probably one of the weakest candidates, uh, not in the nation maybe, but really in Ohio in the Rust Belt. Uh, he wouldn't do as good as other candidates. So Josh Mandel, he ran a couple of times against uh, the Democrats in previous Senate elections. And I think what we'll see happen is that his numbers will slowly go down and probably going to see a rise in J.D. Vance or... I mean, I should say this, whoever Trump endorses in 2022 will probably be the nominee, of course, and I doubt he decides to endorse uh, Mandel. So, in my opinion, uh, with how things are looking at, it's going to be a pretty easy win for the GOP here by a likely margin. And let's go to Florida, so another state I'm interested in. And finally, so Florida, so uh, there we go. So, the Republican primary, it's, it's going to be... Marco Rubio, of course. What's interesting is the Democratic primary. The reason it's interesting is because the Florida Democrats have not been doing good in recent elections, and if they keep losing more and more, it's just not going to be good for the Florida Democrats. And uh, the only one here that's uh, noteworthy is Val Demings, who was actually one of the potential vice president picks by Joe Biden, but he decided to go for uh, Kamala Harris. So I just see Florida being a likely state to... Uh, in the future, in 2022, since it's looking to be a good year for the GOP. Let's go to uh, uh, North Carolina. So, North Carolina. Oh, there we go, finally. So, North Carolina, it was held previously by the GOP and uh, Richard Burr, uh, who's retiring. So, let's go to the Republican primary. So, there's really only two uh, people in this uh, primary. So, it's Ted Budd, who's doing okay against the former governor of the state, Pat McCrory. And since the Trump endorsement, Ted Budd has done pretty well in the polls. Uh, he's just ahead of Pat McCrory, and uh, it seems like he's probably going to be the nominee. While for the Democrats, it's really only one person. The only person is Cherry Beasley, who was the uh, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. And uh, and if we go to the polls, uh, right here, it's really... Ted Budd does have a lead, but I think it's going to get even bigger since there's still a lot of undecided voters, and it's looking like a big... Uh, decent red wave in 2022 and I think with how things are going in every single aspect of the nation and the economy, uh, Biden's popularity and approval, I think uh, North Carolina will be a likely state. I think it will just uh, be above the threshold and be a 
5% win for the GOP here. And yeah, so let's move on to, um, well, you know what, let's, let's talk about Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, yeah, so Wisconsin, so as many of you know, uh, I mean, Ron Johnson, by the time this video is out, perhaps he has said something about running in it's kind of just weird at this point uh, for the Republican primary. It looks like it's going to be Ron Johnson, but even if he doesn't run, there's still a lot of candidates by the GOP here, like Gallagher, Duffy, um, and Ron Johnson, of course. Uh, there's still some decent candidates for the Democrats. It's really up to two people that being uh, at the moment will be Mandela Barnes, the Lieutenant Governor of the state, and there's also people like Tom Nelson. But yeah, if you go back to the, and not go back, but go to the polls, uh, it's really Mandela Barnes who's more of a progressive candidate. And I see this race being pretty easy for the GOP and I, I even think the GOP will not only win this race by a lean margin, I think, but by a likely margin. Even though barely above the threshold for it, they would win here by a, similar to North Carolina by around 5%. And let's go to New Hampshire. So New Hampshire, uh, it was probably one of the most, not interesting, but most odd elections as of now. So uh, we have Maggie Hassan, uh, the Democratic incumbent, um, seeking re-election. But even though 2022 is looking like a, you know, decent red wave that would make uh, Hassan be a, an easy candidate to defeat, there's really not anyone big uh, saying they're going to run. There was a lot of talk about Chris Nunu running, but... He'd rather stay as governor. There was a lot of talk about maybe Scott Brown, who was a former senator running, but he also declined. And many people thought, okay, if they're not running, that, that for sure means Kelly Ayotte is running. Nope. Maybe they'll backtrack uh, on their decision, but I doubt that. So there's really Donald Bulldog. Mm, uh, let's go here. So probably like a, like a C tier candidate for the GOP. I mean, it's just nothing noteworthy. You know, this could easily be a easy seat for the GOP to win here by a tilt or a lean margin, but there's really no one, there's there's no one big running here, and, and the GOP are really gonna miss uh, this seat if something bad happens in, for them in either Arizona or Nevada or Georgia, you know, but as of now, there's no noteworthy candidates by the GOP in this state, and so uh, let's go to uh, Arizona, Arizona, yeah, um, I want to talk about Arizona, so Arizona, uh, with the incumbent senator who won in 2020, you know, uh, Mark Kelly, even though he won against a, a bad uh, GOP candidate who was Martha Max Sally, in 2022, it should be harder for him to win, I uh, should say, re-election. And uh, the Republican primary is probably one of the most well-known races uh, for the GOP in the primary, so there's uh, Blake Masters, who's more of the populist, uh, as I was saying, uh, the Republican Party, and I think Mark Vernovich is probably going to be the nominee, but, you know, the Trump endorsement could really mess up this race for the GOP. Uh, let's go to, um, yeah, the polls for the GOP primary. It's Mark Vernovich, who is uh, more, not establishment, but less populist than the current attorney general of this state. And uh, uh, he's beating Blake Masters by a decent margin, but there's still a lot of undecided voters that are probably going to vote for the Trump guy. And if we go to the polls, it's really Mark Kelly and Blake Masters. You can see, from what we know, there's a clear drop in support between uh, Vernovich and Masters. And I think uh, the easiest option for the GOP easily would be to go for Mark Vernovich, since the state is more of a neocon state, more of a Romney, McCain. And if the GOP nominates Vernovich, which would be the smarter option, in my opinion, I think they could maybe even win it by a lean margin, but this is the Arizona GOP, bear in mind. They could nominate Blake Masters and maybe win. They could. I would not be surprised if we just get another Arizona GOP moment and it just... And they just mess things up and Mark Kelly wins. But as of now, I see the Republican Party winning here in Arizona by a tilt margin. Oh yeah, wait, uh, let's talk about Pennsylvania. Yeah, for Pennsylvania... As many of you know, uh, this is one of the most money, big money spenders in the nation for 2022. And for the Republican primary, since uh, Pat Toomey will retire by the end of his term, uh, the Republican primary is really interesting. There's a lot of a lot of candidates, but the main one is Dr. Oz. He does have weaknesses, but he is also running a Reagan 
sort of campaign, which is kind of interesting. He's going for that instead of the Trump-like campaign, which is, yeah. It could work since, you know, a lot of voters that are 40, or I should say more older than the millennials, will still like Reagan. So, in the Republican primary, um, after Sean Pernell, um, his career just went out the drain, Dr. Ross just came in and just took all the momentum. You know, I think most likely Trump will give out uh, his endorsement to him. It's almost certain as of now that he's probably going to be the nominee for the GOP. While for the Democrats, it's really a, a race between uh, Fetterman and Lamb and, and Malcolm Kenyatta. So uh, if we go to the polls, uh, it's really Fetterman. So if you don't know much about politics, Fetterman is more of a progressive on most issues, but he has a lot of past uh, problems that, and allegations, and and I think, in my opinion, what's going to happen is that this state could easily be a, this state will, will actually be a lean state, because the Democrats are probably going to nominate uh, John Fetterman, one of the weakest candidates, I would say, in this uh, northeastern uh, area, or in Rust Belt area, I should say. Nevada, uh, probably one of the, my favorite states. Another Democrat uh, held seat at the moment by Catherine Cortez Masto, who's trying to run for re-election. And if you don't know what's happening in politics, uh, recently the Democrats in, you know, in Nevada have really just chaotically fought against each other, and the DSA and everything is really f it's gonna lead to the Republicans having a strong strong chance in 2022, and the GOP nominee. The main one is Adam Laxalt, so, uh, you know, former attorney general of this state. And uh, if you look at the polling, you know, you can already see it's gonna be a neck and neck race, uh, even with uh, Masto being incumbent senator. And I believe that with the current uh, environment, nationwide, inflation, you know, staying, and all that sort of stuff inter-party struggle in the DSA, the socialist wing against the democratic, or I should say the centrist wing, it's just gonna lead to the Republicans winning here, as long as they nominate someone decent. And finally, for Georgia, so for Georgia, and yeah, for Georgia, probably one of the states I'm not sure of, we have Raphael Warnock, incumbent senator against the Republican primary, being two people, Gary Black and a you know, state politician against a uh, Herschel Walker, one of the, you know, I would say one of the most uh, volatile candidates in, in all the Senate seats or the key states in 2022. And Herschel is the leading nominee by the GOP, but I don't have a good feeling about him. I think he has many weaknesses that could, and personal issues that could arise that could lead to Raffler Warnock winning, especially since, uh, if you don't know, uh, Stacey Abrams is running in 2022, which could help Raffler Warnock a lot. But in my opinion, what's going to happen is either either the Democrats will just barely win here because of Herschel Walker having a meltdown, having a Sean Purnell scandal. But as of now, I barely see the GOP winning this state and the seat by a tilt margin. And as you can see, uh, the Republicans have 53 seats against the Democrats, 47 seats. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video.